Out of the 41 panels in Adobe Illustrator, my favorite one has to be the Appearance panel. It has a prominent place in my workspace and I use it pretty much all the time. I always get surprised how some users can live without it. So in this video I decided to share 5 reasons why you need to take the Appearance panel more seriously. The appearance panel in Illustrator has to be one of the most underestimated ones. And the reason for that is because you can get away without using it at all and you can still create an amazing artwork. But once you start using it, it really opens up lots of possibilities. So in this video, I'm going to show you five tips that you can apply very quickly and easily and incorporate in your workflow. So first of all, you have to find the panel and it is under the window menu appearance, but it's also worth opening the graphic styles panel together with it. You can see I already have these two here on the right in my panels. I'm going to start with the technique on this text that I have here because I would like to change the color currently. It's just really hard to read and it doesn't really work well with the composition. So I'm going to set the fill to white and by default when you do it through the swatches panel you won't actually see this showing up in the appearance panel. So why is that a problem? Well not really a big problem with the fill color but once you start applying colors to the stroke it might actually be an issue. So Notice what I'm going to do here. I'm going to switch to the stroke color on the swatches panel and I'm going to pick a color. Let's just say black for now. Now still not showing up in the appearance panel. If I increase the stroke size, so I'm just going to keep increasing it. By default, the stroke is going to grow both inside and outside of the text. Of course, this is something that you can normally go and change from the stroke panel and you can set it to align inside or align outside. But you can see that these are not available when you do it in this way. So just to prove this again to you, if I go into window menu and show it through the stroke panel and set this to show all the options here, we won't be able to click on these other options. So they are not available. So this is actually something I've seen with a lot of my students that they are struggling with because it's almost like a dead end street that once you set it up like this, you can't really do much about it unless you fix it through the appearance panel. So let me show you how to do this properly. So instead of setting the colors here, I'm going to remove these attributes by using the question mark on the keyboard. So I remove first the stroke color. So simply having this selected, pressing question mark or the forward slash is the one that removes it and then press X on the keyboard and press question mark again. So I remove both colors. So now the text is actually completely invisible. You go to the appearance panel and click on on the add new field option and you see it chose black as the default color but I can change that to white. Then I already have a stroke color here added and if I choose for this one let's say black just to keep it simple and now if I increase the size of this you see again it's set to the center line and if I go to the stroke options it's still not going to allow me to align inside or outside and that is because of a restriction on strokes on text. But what you can do now because you created these attributes in the appearance panel is to swap the order of the stroke and fill. So if I drag the stroke underneath the fill, it immediately goes behind it, which in a way looks like it's outside of the fill. Now it's not exactly what you would normally have with the outside stroke option because now we only see half of the stroke. So even though it's set to three millimeters, we only see 1.5 millimeters. But of course, if I want three millimeters, I just have to go higher. So I can go up to six millimeters, which again means three millimeters outside, three millimeters inside, but that we don't see because it's covered up by the fill. So it seems a little bit long winded, but I found this a good work around the fact that you can't really work with stroke properly around editable text. Of course, once you expand text, you will be able to use the stroke inside outside, but 
you would want to keep the text editable because you might want to change the font or you might want to change the text itself. So I highly recommend to check this out. And this is one of the first reasons I would recommend to start using the appearance panel. Now, just as a little side note here, I always like to keep the swatches panel clear and only include the colors that I'm working with. So if I go in here and choose select all unused and I can delete them, like that and I'm going to select the artwork instead and click on this new color group option which will add these colors and I can just call it artwork and there you go these are the actual colors used in the artwork so that way when I select my text again I can now easily use these colors on the stroke so probably I can use one of these orange colors or maybe a darker purple which actually works well with the background so it blends in but still stands out at the same time and of course we can also apply one of these colors on the fill as well so I'm just going to do that maybe this one this looks quite nice of course let's not forget that when you are changing colors of text you can also just highlight a particular letter so for example if I want the J to be white in this case I could specifically override that color or maybe even use blue in this case but if you do that and at the same time you have fill color applied on the type itself it's not going to show unless you move the fill under the characters so if I drag them all the way at the bottom now any local overrides will show on top of the attributes that I assigned here so as you can see it can get even more complicated once you try to change individual colors on characters so what you have to remember is that to avoid overriding those local changes on characters you want to place both the fill and the stroke underneath the characters so that way whatever I'm changing here once again I can show you it's going to immediately affect the selected text now you can also access effects directly from the appearance panel if you click on this icon here and you can go to any of these options but for now I'm just going to use one of these let's say blur Gaussian blur so once I click OK and apply this and by default as you can see this was applied only to the selected attribute which in this case was fill so it goes under fill which means that the strokes are not affected but also that color override that we have on the letter J is again not affected so if I want this effect to be global and affect everything in this selected object I can drag this down all the way to the bottom again under both of the attributes and when I let go now you can see it will affect everything in the selected object so this I normally call a global effect and I would love to see a separation line here or somehow indicate in Illustrator that this is going to affect everything but as long as you remember the things that you drag to the bottom is going to be affecting everything and you can remember it as global effect then you will know how to work with them properly Another useful thing to remember is whenever you are using raster effects in Illustrator which would be most of these Photoshop effects and some even from the Illustrator effects then you should always pay attention to the document raster effects settings which you can find here and this is going to be a global setting for the whole document where you can set the resolution for these effects so even though Illustrator is almost purely vector based there are still these raster effects for which you need to specify the resolution so if I keep it on screen that's not going to look good in print for print you want to go to high or sometimes even higher than that but that's normally enough and if I click OK now I know that I will have a good resolution on this blurred text if I zoom closer I can show you the difference so this is how it looks now but if I go back in here and I set this back to 72 ppi and then I click OK you see immediately that it turns into this pixelated low res version of the effect and my tip is to keep working with a lower resolution sometimes I would even set this to lower than 72 so you can set it to other and maybe set it to 30 ppi which will make Illustrator work much faster so it will be easier to work with complex illustrations with lots of raster effects on it but then having it set to this low amount will remind you to increase it at the very end so once you are done with the illustration 
that's when you go back, select it, and then go back to 300 PPI at the very end, once you know that you are not going to make any more changes. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe certified online training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. Now here's another artwork and I'm going to show you two more techniques that's worth remembering about the appearance panel. And one of them is that you can combine multiple attributes on the same object. So you can have multiple strokes and multiple fills and obviously multiple effects as well. But when I select this line here, you can see it's actually made up entirely of stroke attributes. So we have three strokes. I can turn off the one in the middle and I can zoom a little bit closer. You can see this better. I can turn off that darker gray as well and then we have the pavement color on the bottom. So I built it up in a way that I have the thickest stroke at the bottom which is that gray one. I can then use this darker gray on top of it and then the orange dash line in the center which is the thinnest one and that's why I kept it on the top. So you almost have like a hierarchy or structure like the layers inside the appearance panel. Whatever is on top is closest to you and then you can build up strokes and fills in whatever way you wish to work with them. So just to show you how I work with this, I'm going to create an additional stroke attribute by selecting one that I would like to duplicate. And then I click on the add new stroke icon here at the bottom. Once that's added, I can change the color of this, change it to a slightly darker one like that. But then I click on the stroke options and I'm going to turn on dashed line and I will reduce the dash size by using the down arrow on my keyboard to maybe one millimeters and then I press tab to go to the gap size and I use the up arrow on the keyboard to increase the distance between these. So increasing the gap and maybe further reducing the dash down to 0.5. I can type this in. I created a nice little division on the pavement. It almost looks like slabs of concrete now. So that's again achieved by just using the appearance panel and keep building up attributes on top of each other. So we can see it without this one and with this one. And you can see how quickly you can add a bit of flavor and detail simply by just using additional attributes. Now to be able to reuse this effect, and this would be the last tip of this tutorial, it's always good to save your complex appearance settings as a graphic style. So all you have to do is to go to the graphic styles panel and while having the object selected on which you apply the attributes, you would click on the new graphic style option. And once that's saved, you can select additional objects and just simply reapply the style that you created. And the coolest thing about having a graphic style is that once it's applied on an object, you can even continue drawing it and it will automatically apply the effect. So these were my tips about the appearance panel, but I'm sure there's other useful techniques that I forgot to include. So if you have anything you would like to share with the other viewers, please let us know about it in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.